Uh, and, and Scott literally had never seen those charts before. So <laughs> we, 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 we did fake the drawing. We knew he was coming up, but he had no idea what that was going to be. So that was good. All right. Um, just to start doing 15 seconds, this is a video fast film. Um, I'm here to talk about hydrogen and why it's stupid. Uh, I, do, I do work. I have a day job at Georgia Tech. They pay me, but they don't pay me to say this. So this is not the opinion of Georgia Tech or anybody in the university system. Blah blah blah. <laughs> More disclaimers. I'm not talking about fusion. We don't know how to do fusion yet. We certainly don't know how to do cold fusion yet. We know how to burn this stuff. Okay, burning it's done. And we're going to go through some of the reasons why burning it's done, either whether you're burning it in a regular piston engine or a fuel cell, which is burning it slow. Either way, we're burning it. Good. Right, good. So everybody thinks it's a great idea. I mean, you take it, you know, there's no carbon dioxide emission, there's no footprint, all you get is water, there's an inexhaustible supply. It's lovely stuff, right? And so what BMW was advertising, and this did not survive the transition, but what BMW was advertising was tailpipe water is delicious. And this pissed me off, and that's why I created this presentation for DragonCon, and I'm giving it on Sunday. This is the trick. <clears throat> There's some problems with hydrogen. <laughs> Next slide. Look, this is, this is an RL-10 rocket engine. This is 51 years old. We've been working with hydrogen in the rocket business for a long time. There's a lot of engineering experience with it. We know what works. We know what doesn't work. This is not new technology. The first problem is energy density. There's not a good word in the English language for the opposite of dense. The best I can come up with is fluffy. Hydrogen is fluffy. So if you were to take a five-gallon tank of hydrogen, it would power your house for about a day. The same five-gallon tank of gasoline run through a Honda generator, you buy at Home Depot, will power your house about seven times as long. So in terms of putting enough into a vehicle to get you a decent distance, you're at a seven-to-one disadvantage, even without the insulation of the plumbing. You can't use normal materials, you can't compress it, you can't use valves and gaskets you would normally try to use. It's just a real pain in the ass. Next one. There's this thing called embrittlement. The hydrogen molecule is so tiny it gets inside the little cracks in metal and makes it fail. So if you use it for more than, oh, you know, six months, you get pipes that look like this one. Do you want that in the bottom of your car with explosive material pumping through it? No. <laughs> Fuel pumps. The gas pump you fill your car with transfers about a gigajoule per minute with a 16-year-old doing it safely. <laughs> Hydrogen pumps are really finicky, really expensive. They require certification, and they tend to explode. <laughs> also, when hydrogen burns, it actually burns in the ultraviolet, so it's invisible. So this is a picture of hydrogen. <laughs> this is a picture of the same refinery on fire. <laughs> Until, of course, all the you know, you know, stanks will start falling down. There are no hydrogen wells. You don't go out to the West Texas and drill for this stuff. You don't pump it out of the ground. It is not a source of energy. It is not a fuel. There actually is no such thing as hydrogen fuel. Hydrogen is a really awkward battery. So what you've got is a battery that's dangerously explosive. It's hard to work with. It's got a lousy power weight ratio. And by the way, if you don't drive your car for two weeks, it all blows off. So you have nothing left in the tank and you try to go out there. You know, lithium ions are looking better and better. How do you make hydrogen? You make it out of methane. That's called natural gas. It's a fossil fuel. So what you get is the hydrogen and carbon dioxide. <laughs> Wasn't that the point? So what you've got is you're putting carbon dioxide in here, you're just putting it in someplace else. Okay. Now, the ideal would be to make it out of water. You take two water molecules, you split them apart. You get hydrogen, you get oxygen. The problem is those chemical bonds are really happy in, in, in water. And it's really, really expensive to split them up. Matter of fact, it costs four times as much to get hydrogen out of, out of water than out of methane. This is not an engineering problem. This is a law of physics problem. You cannot solve this problem by throwing more money at it. Simply. So if, if you're going to do hydrolysis to get, oxygen, to get uh, hydrogen, you need a lot of really cheap electricity. Nuclear. If you do it right, you get 23% efficiency at best. It does all boil off. So four, three times as much energy as goes into the engineer car disappears somewhere in the production line. That's not a good thing. Go ahead. Uh, if you want to pipe this stuff across country, you need cryogenic pipelines. Best estimate for doing this in the national infrastructure is a trillion dollars. You can buy a lot of plug-in pipelines for a trillion dollars. Go ahead. 
Fuel cells are actually older than batteries. Fuel cells are older than internal combustion engines. Fuel cells are older than turbines. Why aren't we using fuel cells every day? Because they don't work very well. No one's ever been able to make a useful production fuel cell except in exotic circumstances. I'm going to finish with this and give me 20 seconds on this chart. There's two kinds of problems in the world. There's the kind that are resource constraints. And if we throw enough money at the problem, you know, we can do an Apollo. We can build a thousand nuclear power plants. We can mine the asteroids. We know how to do it, which takes money. The other kind of problem we don't know how to do. Curing cancer, flying faster than light, making a hydrogen economy. That's not an economics problem, it's not an engineering problem, it's like fundamental science, we don't know how to do it. It's a lousy basis for public policy, and I wish we would stop, stop, stop spending money on this stuff. Hydrogen minutes. Thank you.